My name is Peter Egger. I'm a professor of economics at ETH Zurich, which is a polytechnical university. What my colleagues and I were interested in in this particular chapter or paper uh, is effects uh, of transfers that the European Commission provides to regions in the Union uh, and their effects on uh, economic prosperity and particular economic growth. Regions or people who receive such transfers on average are worse off than everybody else and they converge faster. So the problem is we have to avoid confounding of effects and cause. Uh, and for that reason we had to uh, go about the methodology that would get rid of that problem. So we did this by looking into regions in the European Union where, uh, that were very close to the boundary as to where they would receive such transfers and where they would not, uh, and comparing regions that were just receiving such transfers according to the law and ones that were just not receiving them uh, would give us results as to what the effect was. On the other hand, we were comparing uh, in a very flexible statistical way uh, regions that would receive a certain amount of transfers uh, to other ones that did not, uh, that just received a slightly lower amount of transfers and we could identify the effects of those transfers from comparison of such regions. The main findings of our research are actually three. First of all, those transfers that the European Commission administers in order to generate uh, convergence in economic growth in recipient regions, uh, they have a positive effect on average. So every euro or every pound spent in a, a re recipient region would generate a more than uh, one euro or uh, one pound of effect. Recipient regions don't uh, uniformly respond to uh, recipients of transfers. Uh, in particular, regions that are uh, lagging behind in terms of institutional quality, in particular uh, corrupt regions, uh, but also ones that have not enough human capital, educated people, uh, they make less than on average uh, of recipients of those, those transfers, which to some extent is sad because uh, that is the regions that this program was actually implemented for. So to some extent we conclude from this uh, that uh, some redesign of the program uh, towards fostering uh, the bettering of institutions and the formation of human capital and education in regions might be better than just looking into growth effects. Transfers do generate growth and income, but uh, if regions get uh, excessively much uh, of such uh, transfers, uh, they don't respond as well. So there is an optimum level of transfers that we estimate at, at, as to be at around 0.4% uh, of recipient region GDP. Uh, we found actually that uh, on average the transfers given uh, to regions in the United Kingdom uh, generated about as much per capita income growth as they did in the European Union on average. Uh, regarding uh, transfer intensity, so that is the amount of transfers relative to GDP received in UK regions, we would expect actually uh, a bigger of an effect. So uh, UK regions do not uh, receive as many transfers relative to their GDP as EU regions on average, which is not surprising because the UK is a country that is better off than uh, an, an, an average EU country. On the other hand, uh, UK regions are better off in terms of absorptive capacity. They have better educated people, better institutions than the average recipient region. From that perspective, we would also expect uh, UK regions to receive more uh, return on investment than average uh, EU regions. <laughs>